my one year and your anniversary. And your four year anniversary. Yes, my four year anniversary. Since Sheree just made a video on that, I should make what I've learned yes. four so years of so army needs living to do it full too. time, right? Right. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed her video. Now, this is my video. Fire! I have fire! Yeah! <laughs> it's my four year anniversary. Four years of full time RV living. I've actually owned the RV for six years, but I have been full time now for 48 months. And I have learned so much. I've made a lot of mistakes as well. And by the way, I'm Tom with EnjoyTheJourney.life. Our channel is all about RV living full time right now not waiting five ten years down the road to do it but choosing a lifestyle of freedom and adventure whether that's an rv or not but doing that right now this particular video is going to be 25 of the best things i've learned about rv living pros and cons and actually i'm going to call it on some opinions out there because there are so many opinions people confuse facts with opinions and I'm gonna give you some opinions as well but I'm also gonna point out some that I think are just plain wrong because I want you guys to be able to get out there and enjoy this lifestyle and do it as soon as you possibly can and not waste a few precious years of your life waiting around for this hopefully you caught Cherie's six month and one uh, year uh, anniversaries as well. I will link to that up here or there will be a link in the notes below as well as be sure to catch the companion blog post for this particular video because there is so much information that I just want to make sure you if you don't hear it in the video check it out on the blog post and give me some love for this video here I know you guys have shown Cherie a lot of love for her videos her anniversaries. give me some love uh, this is the very first video like this that I have made I'm gonna just give you the absolute best tips that I possibly can let's get right into it we're gonna break this video up into sections the first section is the planning stage of RV living full-time now don't rush through this because you want to enjoy the planning stage of this because if it's a few months or a few years you want to enjoy your journey in this particular part of it like just figuring out what kind of rv that you can afford which one that you want the layout the type shopping around at different rv dealers watching all the different youtube videos and rv shows that you can i have lots of great memories uh, about this particular time because Part of the enjoyment of this lifestyle is the anticipation of actually doing it. Just imagining yourself in your RV out in some amazing location, just relaxing or working on something you're inspired to be doing. So enjoy this stage right now. Number one is people are gonna think you're crazy. Your family, friends, coworkers, they are not gonna understand your decision to go RV living full time. Well, maybe a few of them will, but a lot of them probably will not because they are used to you doing your current life, whatever that is, and selling your house or getting out of your apartment and 
getting rid of a bunch of stuff to get into an RV is going to seem very foreign to them and they don't want you to change and that's not about you that's about them so what are you going to do about that well you have to be willing to say this is what this is my choice so I'm going to get out there and do it anyway so again your friends and family although they love you and they think they're helping you by giving you some doubts don't listen to them because you know in your heart that this is the lifestyle you want if you're choosing that and you just you have to have that intention to create that and not listen to the naysayers your friends and family may say hey you need to come home at the very sign of a challenge your very first challenge you have along the way come back and get a safe and secure job rent uh, an apartment or house or get back into a different house and you know there is no job security we are all just one or two decisions away from a major change in your life a loss of a job a loss of a relationship a loss of health a job is is just a job and you can always come back and get a different job later if you really decide this lifestyle isn't for you. We have actually heard from quite a few parents of adult children that say they're not excited about your decision to full-time RV. And we're like, so what? I mean, your job as a parent is to raise your child to the age of an adult 18 or 21 and to have them ready to get out there in society and some people are actually holding up their plans to get out there until a child finds a new job or an apartment on their own finishes college something like that well they are capable of finding another place to stay to say hey in two months i am going full time you need to make arrangements to live somewhere else if you're allowing your adult children just to live with you rent free just for as long as they need to get out there then you're enabling them so let them know what your plans are and you can give them some time to figure things out and even if they're in college they are more than able to stay with a friend get a roommate whatever that needs to look like so don't delay and if you have younger kids you know getting on the road and actually experiencing what's in the history books all these places i think is a better education anyway and the rest of it can be learned online so don't delay another thing i learned is to have multiple sources of income sheree and i have more than 10 different sources of income so if one of them starts to get less or something like that you can maybe focus on another one picking up the multiple sources of income could look like a part-time job some contract work maybe an online business so you've got a number of different things to do and think multiple sources of income not just one source because that can be a recipe for disaster you can find a job or work opportunity anywhere everywhere you would take your RV there are so many work opportunities if you just open up your mind and think outside the box with a smaller footprint you don't need a really great paying job you can do anything besides all the online opportunities and this next tip that I've learned over four years is one I'm gonna have to call bull on a lot of opinion out there and that is you have to be debt free to go full time in your RV that is absolute bullshit. and I've been doing it four years and I'm not debt free I have an accounting degree so I am coming at this one from a little bit of expertise and experience the thing is a payment on a debt is just that it's another payment just like if you were buying groceries or fuel or your cell phone bill whatever that is it's just a payment and there may be a few financial gurus out there that are saying debt free is the way to go and that's certainly a good thing but it's just like that's one way of getting to your dreams of living full-time in an RV there are 
thousands of other ways of making that work. And it simply is just figuring that debt payment into your budget and making sure you have enough coming in to cover that. The rest of it is just opinion out there. And I don't want people waiting like we have gotten from some comments that, oh, in five or 10 years after I pay down my debt, I'm gonna do that because it's a waste of time. You don't wanna do that and wait that long because who knows what could happen in a few years. You can keep paying your debt down as your full-time RV living, which is what I have done. I have paid down thousands of dollars in debt in the last four years, and eventually a lot of those debts will be paid off. So it is something you can do. You just simply have to have enough income coming in to cover those payments. So I'm again, <laughs> this is a big one for me. I'm really passionate about it. So don't think you have to be debt free. If you have another opinion, go ahead and put it in the comments down below. I want to hear that kind of stuff, but I'm, I'm telling you on this one, uh, you can do this sooner than you think. We are currently doing a 30 day boondocking challenge where we are challenging ourselves to lower our expenses as much as possible by paying as little as $5 a night or free to boondock and watching every penny that we spend. And we look forward to reporting on that uh, in a future video or videos on this channel. I wanna end this section on debt by using a comment from one of our viewers. And I just wanna quote it uh, exactly here. I'm going full time in two years when my daughter goes off to college. And as someone who has worked in the senior care industry for many years, I can tell you that you should go out and spend your money now and have a great time. In the end, either people give it to the nursing homes with your private pay or family comes in and steals it. So get out there and do it now. And speaking of money, you can do this on a low budget or a high budget. There are so many different levels that you can do this at, from a free or a used RV all the way up to a $500,000 coach. You get to choose what lifestyle you want to get in at. And you can always vary your expenses from month to month, depending on where you want to stay, how much you're gonna eat out, what kind of groceries you're gonna buy. So don't feel like it's just one size fits all. There are many YouTube videos out there about different budgets and what people spend to live full time in an RV. And it's really gonna come down to what you actually figure out for yourself and what your RV looks like. We put out a video that is RV for under $1,000 a month. Could you do that? And we're gonna link to that up here. And it was just a challenge question to see if you could do it. And we actually had people comment that did it under $500 a month. So it can be done for less. And to wrap up this particular section, not everybody loves this lifestyle. My ex didn't love this lifestyle. She grew to hate it and that's okay. You might decide to do this for a while and say, you know what? I prefer being in a sticks and bricks. You're not a failure. Even if people think, oh, you never should have done that. What could you experience in six months or a year of your life of traveling? If this is something you want to do, maybe you could rent or borrow somebody else's RV, take a sabbatical from your job, or again, just quit and find a different job when you come back if you decide that it's not for you. Some people love it or some people hate it, which is like life in general. So it's not a failure if you decide that you want to go back to living in one spot. It's just a choice. Whatever makes you happy and you get to decide what makes you happy. So this next section is when you're going out to find that perfect RV to live in full time. Number one, research, research, research. You want to 
look at all the different types of RVs that are available and see what size you can get into. I would recommend getting into the smallest one you possibly can for a lot of reasons that will save you some money. But check the reviews on that particular RV, the make and model and the year because uh, manufacturers do make changes between the years of uh, the same model. So you can get on Facebook groups for that particular model. For example, we have a Palomino Columbus. So you can actually join that group and talk to other owners of that about what they like or don't like about their RV. And you can actually, if you really want one, some people are selling them in that group as well. I'm kind of embarrassed to say this, but I never looked at the reviews. My ex and I were so excited about just getting the perfect RV. We were looking at the style that we liked. We didn't check out the reviews. And what's worse is I wrote a book on online reviews. Definitely don't skip that particular thing because you want to get something that's really reliable and it's going to save you on maintenance going forward so you get many, many years of happy travels in your RV. And as I said before, size does matter. Length is an issue when it comes to an RV. And I would recommend getting a smaller RV because this 40 foot fifth wheel that we have can't get in maybe 50% of the campgrounds out there, national parks, state parks. And a lot of the best places are only available to smaller RVs. I hope you hear me on this one. Our RV is awesome. It's got lots of space. We have a washer and dryer, a big bathroom, a good sized kitchen but it is just too big to get into a lot of places. So definitely consider the size as a huge factor of the kind of traveling that you're gonna be doing. Make sure you get the right tow vehicle if you're getting a fifth wheel or travel trailer. I made this mistake too. I bought a half ton regular gas truck to pull our giant RV. It was not big enough and nobody at the dealer said so when I could have actually returned the truck and gotten something else. So for a couple of years, I drove this RV with this tiny truck and it was not a safe situation. And I actually ended up destroying the rear end of that truck uh, in that process. Eventually upgraded to a diesel, uh, one ton dually that I love and it's a lot safer than my other truck. So I know this is a mistake a lot of people are making out there. I see all kinds of huge RVs being towed by small trucks. And when you're going through the mountains, it's not safe at all because these things don't stop on a dime. A used RV could be a good option for you because Depreciation is huge. You drive an RV off the lot brand new and it could drop five or $10,000 in its value immediately. And a nicely used, taken care of by the original owner's RV might have a lot less maintenance or problems going forward if they've already taken care of all of that. So definitely consider uh, the deal that you could get on a used RV. And there are lots of people, again, because not everybody loves this lifestyle, they end up after a couple of years saying, you know what, I'm gonna sell that, or they've had a change in income or whatever. So you can find used RVs for you know, maybe even 50% of their retail price, but still in almost new condition. So shop around on like eBay or Craigslist, your local uh, newspaper, online classifieds, and see what kind of a deal you can find when you're looking for an RV. And my next tip is get the right full-time RV living insurance. And I made a video on this about my mistakes 
on this so instead of going into a lot of detail right here I'm just gonna link to that video up here so definitely check that out and do your research on the right full-time RV living insurance and another one of my mistakes is make sure you get the right tires on your new or used RV even brand new RVs need to have the tires checked to make sure they are the right rating for the weight of your RV. I made a mistake on this and I'm gonna go ahead and link to the video up here on the tire video that you need to watch. And a lot of people have made this mistake as well. In fact, there's so many great comments on that video. Uh, we've actually had someone tell us that the RV tires that come on your brand new RV are meant only to be good enough to take that RV off the lot and to a tire dealer to get brand new tires. Yeah, it's that bad. So check out the tires on your RV. And don't even dream about driving off the lot with your new or used RV until you've had it inspected by an independent RV expert or repair person. It doesn't matter if it's brand new or used, you're basically buying a small house. And you wouldn't buy a house without having it inspected, right? So there's thousands of components in these and it's like driving your house down the road. You're gonna have things with problems, even new. So make sure you have it inspected thoroughly before driving it off the lot. That is gonna save you a lot in the long run. If you think your RV was expensive, wait till the maintenance and repairs. This was something I absolutely was not prepared for. Uh, an RV repair guy was joking around with me and said RV stands for ruined vacation or your boat, for example, stands for bust out another thousand. These repair bills can add up to thousands of dollars a year. Make sure you budget for repairs. Have a credit card or several thousand dollars in a savings account ready for just RV maintenance or unexpected expenses because that will help you in the long run. Oh, and that bright, shiny, extended warranty that you got that was gonna save you a lot of money doesn't cover a lot of things. You gotta read the fine print, and wow, those contracts on those are long. In my experience, they paid for about half of most repair bills, if that. I mean, when my underbelly of the RV peeled off on the freeway, was that covered? No, not covered at all. The diagnosing of a microwave malfunctioning, was that covered? Nope, not covered at all. In the end, my extended warranty was worthwhile. It did pay for more things than the policy did cost, but I was still shocked about all the things it did not cover. So make sure you look at your contract when you're buying that warranty and know what you might have to pay if you have those uh, repairs. In this next section, I'm gonna be talking about things as you're preparing to get on the road and be full-time in your RV. When you're packing up your RV, you are gonna probably put too much stuff in there. So you really have to put every item that you pack in your RV on trial for its life. Do you really need all of those dishes, all of those clothes, for example, and be prepared to keep downsizing as you go along. Every single item that you own has some weight or emotional baggage to it. It's like this imaginary string attached to that item. So it's so freeing to get rid of stuff. I mean, I actually had a bunch of my clothing stolen and you know what, I don't really miss it. I just have a lot less in my closet now because I didn't need all of those clothes. So it actually saved me from downsizing. And RVs are dangerous. Lots of sharp corners and things. Just look at that right there. I had a run in with the hitch and the hitch won on that one. So. Just be aware, I've, I've seen people that have gotten slashed 
and need stitches from just different sharp things. The stairs are slippery, slides, cabinets. I've seen some people put pool noodles on the edges of their slides so they don't run into them. It looks kind of silly, but I guess if it saves a bump on the head, that's not so silly after all. Driving a large RV is stressful and you got to know how to drive a long trailer for example what that is like so i would recommend trying that out before you buy the rv and make sure you can handle that or you're going to get comfortable with it my rv dealer told me a story about how one guy brand new rv driving out of the lot makes that turn too sharp totally scrapes up the side of his brand new rv and so that's something you need to consider backing up you know if you don't have a pull through site narrow roadways trees oh and low bridges many times did i have to turn around and go another way because of a low bridge so you really have to plan your route carefully there are a few map apps that actually have like the clearance on bridges. So we will link to those down below. This next section is about enjoying the RV lifestyle when you're on the road. Adventuring can be cheap. You don't have to pay a lot of money to have fun. I mean, if you're in Florida, you might decide to go to Disney, but there are all these free beaches out there too. There is hiking and biking, kayaking, so think about all these different activities that don't have to cost a lot of money. On the other hand, you can say, well, I want to take a plane ride or a helicopter ride. You want to rent jet skis. Those things are going to cost money. We do those too, but we definitely figure that into the budget. You are not on vacation, but you get to work with this amazing view. And another tip is be aware of gotcha property taxes in some states. Now I'm calling out the state of Virginia on this one. I had the RV and truck in storage for just a couple of months, like a January and part of February one year. And all of a sudden I got a tax bill that was nearly $500. Yeah. $500 for property tax and I'm not even a resident of Virginia and I never was and I actually had to argue with them and it took a long time to actually get them to clear that up but they were really all concerned about well did you pay property tax in Minnesota for this it's like well you know my state doesn't charge property tax on vehicles like that. We have a lot of other taxes, but not that. They were not willing just to let it go. So it didn't matter whether I was a resident of Virginia or not. They wanted their money. I didn't pay it. They did let me off, but be aware of the local jurisdictions and what you might get hit with like a surprise bill. Like for example, tolls. Tolls are a lot more on an RV than they are a car. Like I'm just thinking about driving around the Destin area on one of the bridges there and between the two different state and I think federal tolls, it was about 20 bucks to drive through there. So be aware of that. You don't have to plan your exact itinerary. This beautiful location right here this wasn't planned. We just happened to find this. And we actually seldom book an RV park or campground in advance. We want to allow for extra time if we're really enjoying the area. We may want to stay longer, explore more, or an unexpected detour if we hear about an amazing location to check out. We have been told that we are crazy by some people on some RV Facebook groups when we said, hey, we're going to go up to Yellowstone and Glacier National Park and we don't have anything booked and they're laughing at us saying oh you need to like book a year in advance well we were great going over close to yellowstone and finding a great monthly spot 
with full hookups and right now we're actually on our way to Glacier National Park and there are several walk-up campsites that we can choose from and that's what we're gonna go after. We just go confidently that we're gonna find the best campsite and speaking of that we did a video on how to find the best campsite and I will link to that up here or down in the notes. Now certain areas like the Florida Keys for example where it can be very very busy and not a lot of campsites we wouldn't like go there unprepared we would definitely have something planned in advance but what we typically do we boondock the first night or two when we get to a location like a Walmart or a Cracker Barrel and then we drop the RV off, we take out the adventure car and we just drive around to different campsites. We look for the best value, the best view. Even when you're looking online, the pictures just don't paint the full story of what kind of a site you're gonna get. And there's nothing better than laying your own eyes on that campsite to see if you're gonna like it, what the view is gonna be like, how level it is. So that's what we do, and that works really, really well for us. You get to choose your own schedule. For example, we stay up late, we sleep in, sometimes we work late till midnight, and we may get up uh, late, you know, maybe 9 a.m., have breakfast at 11 or 12, have lunch at uh, three or four o'clock, have dinner at nine or 10, and you don't have to go by the old programs of the typical breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We will sometimes work seven days a week, or we'll take off during the middle of the week when the crowds are less. You can get to see a lot more stuff quicker because you know all the busy attractions are not that busy. And this lifestyle of moving around every few weeks to every few months keeps your brain fresh. You're like, always learning a new area so once you learn it it's time to move and i think that is is good for you learning new routines each and every week couple of weeks to a month or so and i think that's really cool about this lifestyle the rv living full-time lifestyle i find that i'm more social with this lifestyle. I'm naturally an introvert. I know some of you probably are not gonna believe that, but I am and typically wouldn't be meeting a lot of people just naturally, but there's something about going to awesome places, awesome campsites. People are having fun. They're naturally have questions like, oh, I see you're from Minnesota, what do you do? They hear that we're full-time living in the RV and they're really curious because they want to do it too and so we've met so many awesome people all over the country it's really cool and number 25 things can go bad in the rv when it gets hot we've had some really hot days lately and we've had to throw out some food and so it's something to be aware of that uh when we don't have the AC because again, we're boondocking right now. If you have medical supplies like my diabetic supplies, uh, certain supplements, uh, food that normally stays out of the refrigerator, that can go bad in the heat. So you might need to stick it in a cooler, stick it in the refrigerator. And a bonus tip number 26 is you need to be good at problem solving because things seem to happen in multiples, like two or three different things happening at the same time. Like, oh, a tire blew. Oh, the refrigerator isn't working. Hey, the black tank smells. Things like that seem to happen together and you just need to stop, breathe in, relax, and just deal with the most important situation in the moment. And it's, I guess it's just like life, but I think being on the road, there are more things that can happen because your house is on wheels and there's thousands of moving parts. So you're, you be prepared for unexpected challenges and just accept them as part of your journey and sometimes the coolest things happen from unexpected challenges you might get to stay somewhere that you had no plans to stay while your rv is being worked on and see some really amazing things or meet some really cool people so 
be ready for those challenges that pop up and be mentally prepared for that. And if you are new to our channel, be sure to subscribe right now and then ring that little bell so you get notifications of new videos when they come out. Thank you so much for watching my four year anniversary, and I hope you've really learned a lot from my challenges, maybe some of my mistakes, and hopefully mostly my experience. And we would really like to hear your comments below what you think. If you disagree, that's cool. Put those comments down there. If you have other tips that you could offer other people, if you've been doing this for a day or a thousand days we would love to hear that from you if you like the video give it a thumbs up we appreciate that share it with your other rv friends as well and we have links below you can support the channel by using those links thanks again so much for watching we're going to see you guys in the next video take care so make sure <sighs> Oh, mosquitoes are getting bad. Ooh. <laughs> I think I'm, I'm going to turn around and go the other direction. <laughs> Doing the mosquito dance. Can I shake all these mosquitoes off? Ah, ah, mosquitoes. Oh. I hear voices. You can completely make your own schedule. We stay up late. <laughs> and here's sprinklers. And a bonus number 26 is... <laughs> I need to remember what I want to say. And a bonus number 26. A little light right here to see my face. <laughs> and here comes someone on the road right now. <laughs> so I surprised Bambi over here. <laughs>